Okay. Want to go ahead and grab one final glass? Uh, then we'll get started. I promise not to bore you, and I promise not to talk about things that you've heard everyone else talk about already. And I promise to make the NAREP after hours event better than the event that happened before. So, do I have any new chapter members here? Brand new chapter members? Here we got one here. Uh, can I see? Raise your hand. Okay, I got one, I got two, I got three, I got four. Brand new chapter members. Okay, so make sure that Rose has your name and I will give you a free designation course at Oral. Just to join us Okay, so make sure that Rose has your name before you leave. Now, Rose, no cheaters. If you've been a member two years, three years, you don't qualify. We will find out. We will find out. But if you are a brand new NARAC member, and this is your first year, or you're new this year, make sure Rose has your name, and I will give you a free CD course at Oral on me. Okay? So, now let's move forward. And listen, everybody, if you don't pay attention, we're going to make you sit back in your seats. Okay? So no chitter-chatter in the back. You can eat, you can drink. Jen, no chitter chatter in the back. And if you can't behave, you have to come sit back in your seat. Thank you, Cliff. That, that's why we love Susan. But can I also say that there's something really important I want to bring to light. So, Cliff, can you tell us a little bit about your history with NAREP and how you got to know the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals? Why you support us so much here in North Oh, she's going to take me way back. So, um, uh, it's I wouldn't be here if it were not for NARA. Um, on so many levels, uh, I've been a member of NARA long before I got here. In fact, I was part of the uh, founding group of the chapter in Birmingham, where I was the former CEO there. So we brought NARA to Birmingham, we started the chapter there, and then when we came here, uh, NARA was the first group to ever reach out to me in Orlando. Um, there's so many other groups whose names I will not name, but they would complain because I would not come to their events. And they would say, hey, you always seem to find time to go out and hang out with NARAP. Why don't you come to any of our events? And I said, because NARAP was the event that showed me love. And it was the NARAP chapter in Chicago was one of the first chapters to bring me up to Chicago to speak there to their people. People, And so it was NARAP who embraced me uh, when I got to Orlando. And so it's going to be NARAP that I stick with until I leave. And uh, it's familiar for me. So I love you guys. Um, I won't go too deep into detail because I know I really only have 10 minutes. <laughs> However, um, so let's talk about building wealth. And you've heard a lot of different versions of how to build wealth. But I want to tell you this from the 50,000 foot view, uh, from the association level, and some of my travels. One of the reasons uh, that you see us, we're always traveling and we're talking about going global. How many of you guys have had a chance to take a trade mission with us? Me, me, well, me, 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 me. let's talk about the combination of what you've seen. You heard someone earlier talk about insurance. You heard someone talk about investment. One of the things that I've seen people do to build wealth, when you travel with us, you will meet some of these people. What would you do if there were an investment that you can invest in that was backed by insurance? Did you know that you can take your clients? There are many places that I've taken our members to, places such as Dubai, places in France, where they have investment opportunities that are guaranteed between 6 and 12% return on investment. And it's backed by insurance. Mm -hmm. So when you take your people, your investors, to other countries and learn how to invest, then you're guaranteed to get a return on your investment that you've never seen before. And that's one of the reasons that we at Aura are always pushing the global initiative. But I'll take that one step further. So here in the US, you're bound by three credit lending institutions. What are they? Equifax, TransUnion, and okay. So, but when you go to other countries, in particular those that are not in Latin America, and you take your investors there, they don't exist anymore. So, if you have high net worth clients who, uh, for some reason, their debt to income ratio won't allow them to continue to do business here, you can take them to other countries. Some of the countries that are that we're taking our people to and they can purchase additional properties there, use property managers to uh, put someone in that property, and they can continue their investing experience there. I've seen multiple ways for you to take people here who are tapped out in the US, cross the border someplace else that does not have that same experience, 
and you can start all over again uh, building wealth for yourself. And that's one of the things we're teaching our members to do within our global council at Forum. So join us. We're not just taking trips. For those people who are actually listening, we're opening, up, opening doors that they've never seen before. Uh, when I get to some of these countries, I've learned this. Uh, I took Lisa with me this past trip to Dubai, and we sat on a yacht with a billionaire. And as we sat down, I listened to this gentleman talk, and it's ironic because he was breaking down real estate, but he was a bundler of REITs. You see, one of the things that has not been mentioned earlier today are real estate trusts. I'd like to talk to you in the future, I don't have time this evening, but let's talk about REITs and investing in REITs. Or you take your REITs, bundling them like mutual funds, and making money off of that. There are so many other different angles that we can talk about that make money in real estate more than you can ever imagine. And this gentleman, I literally sat on his yacht, I was on the third floor of his yacht, he was negotiating a deal with REITs, and then he stopped, took another phone call, negotiated a deal to buy uh, or sell or build literally 20 other military drones. And then after he got through talking about the drones, he said, okay, now let's talk about these REITs again. Now, I was scared at that point because he was negotiating an arms deal <laughs> with me on his yacht and Lisa and I sitting there. But I'm telling you, uh, and so what he wanted to happen was he wanted Aura, the Association of Realtors, to push his new REIT software and bring it to the United States. And that's one of the things that we're working on right now is a property management software that's comprehensive. And you're going to hear more about that later on as we talk to, uh, next year. But there's so many other ways for you to make money on another level that you never imagined. But it starts right here at NARAP. It starts right here at networking. And it starts right there at Aura within our global community. So another thing that I want to talk to you about is Opportunity Zone. You guys understand that we're building a new building, correct? Woo! We're building that building because we now have over 20,000 members. And it's only going to get bigger. Uh, now, we hope that it slows down. And we're budgeting for the slowdown. But the fact of the matter is, is I'm getting 150 new member applications every week. 150 new applications coming through the computer every week, people who want to get into real estate. And it's not slowing down. Now, fortunately, some of those people do fall out the back. But the reality is that everyone wants to get into real estate. Everyone continues to want to get into real estate. Why? Because real estate has made more millionaires than any other investment in the history of mankind. So I also want to say this to you. Do not, and especially after you've heard my voice this evening, do not make everyone else rich and you die poor. If you're not investing in real estate, then you need to stop. Stop what you're doing and start doing it yourself. I gave a charge to our board of directors and I said, hey, listen, we're the only people that are in the business of real estate, but we're not in real estate. We should own more property than anyone else in the city of uh, Orlando. And so we chose to invest in our own community and we're building a $20 million building right there, right off of Lee Road. And then the building we're in right now becomes our first income property. And then right next to that, we have a 33,000 square foot building that we're gonna lease out. We just signed our first tenant. Well, I don't mind talking, that tenant over a 10-year period is going to net $7 million. Mm. Woo! We're talking about building generational wealth at the Association of Realtors. Mm. So now, if you're not investing in real estate on your own, then what are you doing? I charge you today to stop making everyone else wealthy, and you're not making yourself wealthy. So once we put our next tenant in the building, that building that we're leasing out next door to Aura is actually going to pay the, the loan for the building we're going into. Woo. But guess what? We didn't need that because that loan was collateralized against the investments that we already had in the bank. Yeah. We all we need. Yeah. So we talk about building generational wealth and understanding how money works. Now, um, with due respect to all the vendors in the room, there's one group in here that I want to get to give a shout out, that's Northwestern Mutual. The reason I'm doing that is because years ago, before I ever touched Aura, I was a spokesperson for Governor Bush. And when I did that, uh, I specifically answered to the uh, Office of Insurance Regulation. Building wealth begins with life insurance. And if you don't have something to protect your home right now, everything you work for is going right out the door. So the first thing I want everyone to do, this is a shameless plug, I don't know that they're not asking me, make sure you've taken care of home first. Because if you haven't taken care of your kids, everything that you've worked for is going to go right out down the drain. So make sure that you reach out to these vendors and use the services that they're offering.
For furthermore, for all the non-rep vendors in here, people listen. Do business with people that do business with you. Period. Do business with people that do business with you. Every time you do business with someone that's not a non-rep member, you slow the chapter down, but you also raise the dues. But every time you do business with someone that is a non-rep member, you keep things where they are. Support people who support you. Stop supporting people that don't do business with you. Everybody with me there? Yes. yes. So you make sure that when you start to look at that title company, that insurance company, that mortgage company, whoever they're with, you ask them if they're a member of my rep. And if they say no, tell them, give me a call back when you are. And that's how you do business. Make sure that you're doing business with people who are doing business with you. Okay, so I promised that I wouldn't talk to you about what everybody else is talking about because I never want people to get bored when Cliff comes to talk. So, let's talk about you, about the media. So, Latinos have power. Hispanics are the nation's largest and fastest growing demographic. An annual purchasing power of 1.7, not billion, trillion. You're making the economy work. It should be your face on a dollar bill. <laughs> You're literally making it happen. Hispanics compromise, comprise as much as 55% of new homeowners. Did you guys know that? 55%. Now, overall, the Latino home ownership rate increased to 48.4% in 2021, and that's up from 47. Now, 53% of Latino renters plan to buy a home in the next five years. That's 53% of all the renters that are Latino in Orlando plan to purchase a home within the next five years. If you're not knocking their doors, who? Somebody else is. If you're not reaching out to them, someone else is. 36% plan to buy an investment property in the next five years. Listen, there should be three people in your Rolodex. I tell this to every new member orientation class. There should be three people in your Rolodex. Buyers, sellers, and investors. If you're not cultivating investors from day one, you're wasting your, your CRM. You heard the gentleman ask earlier, uh, you should be looking at people that you sold homes to and seeing and knowing just how much equity they have in that home about this time and reach back out to them and tell them, okay, now let me help you build wealth in real estate. And by the same token, you're, you're bringing that wealth upon yourself. So if you're not reaching out to your former clients saying, hey, you should have about X number of thousand dollars in uh, equity in that property, you're wasting an opportunity, you're waiting for your next seller. You're waiting. But while you're waiting, somebody else is going to figure out and reach out to your client. Let's talk about the numbers. Locally, non-rep members have generated more than $95 million in sales in Central Florida. 95 million, that's strong. Non-rep, that's you guys, that's the, the members, the realtors in this chapter. You, in the first five months, you generated $95 million in sales. Let's talk about the area. In Kissimmee, uh, the members of this particular chapter this particular chapter, uh, approximately 10 million within the five main zip codes of the city. In Longwood, you've done about 3.8 million. In the Waterford Lakes area, 3.6 million. And the strongest percentage of non-rep sales, believe it or not, is in Ocoee. Wow. Now, I know you thought it was going to be somewhere else, but in Ocoee, your sales by 15% of all the sales in Ocoee are from members of non -rep. Where you think you're strong, you're not. You're actually showcasing other areas in Western Orlando. Are you with me here? So in Ocoee, non-rep members are making a particularly strong show. Let's go a little bit deeper. Ah, you didn't know I was going to talk about numbers. You see, I have access to what other people don't. <laughs> so we start talking about sales volume by numbers. We know we have teams, but we also have individuals who are doing, having an outstanding year. Oh, now everybody starts to pull their phones out. <laughs> so you see, uh, Shauna, Alina, Andres, David, Efren, Daniel, Rose, Emily. Look at all the different names, the performance that's happening uh, when we start talking about numbers. And this is just, this is not off MLS sales. There are many, many, many other off MLS sales that I do have the ability to track, but I'm not going to put everybody's business out. But I, I'm always watching our members. I'm always looking at your performance because I want to know, part of my job as CEO, I want to make sure that my chapter of NARA, my chapter of NARA, my chapter of ARIA, my chapters of the Alliance, my chapters of WCR, I don't want there to be a deficit among any of my chapters in terms of their ability to make money compared to anywhere else in the United States. Everybody with me here? 
My job is to produce an environment that's conducive for you to be able to do business in. Now let's talk about in conducive business environments. Steve mentioned something earlier, and also Lisa talked about our path. Guys, I'm gonna tell you something, I'm in a dog fight. I'm in an absolute dog fight right now. Not enough hands went up for our path. Right now we're battling a, a rent freeze in downtown Orlando. You guys familiar with that? The association is trying to prevent the rent uh, freeze from happening while the hearts of people are breaking because the rent is going up. Do you know what it's like to be looking at people in the eye and saying, yes, I know it's hard to pay that, but I myself, I have to advocate for something that's for the better good of all of our members? I know it's hurting. I know that the gas, the economy is hurting everyone, but I can't let something happen that's going to damage private property rights. And our path is how I get that conversation with everybody. Every time you contribute to our pack, every dollar that you give is a conversation that I get to have. I know what people say, hey, Cliff, Cliff, we don't get into all those Republicans and Democrats. You gotta give my money to this and that. You couldn't be further from the truth. Because here's what our pack does. I know you may feel strongly about abortion, and I know you may feel strongly about immigration, and I know you may feel strongly about pro-life, and I know you may feel strongly about pro-choice, and all of our people feel strongly about something. But if I don't have the money to have the conversation, then I've got to jump in your purse, and I've got to get in the league with you, and I've got to get down with you, and now I have to partner with somebody who doesn't share my morals or my beliefs or my principles. Are y'all following me here? Our pack gives me the, end of the opportunity to walk into a building and have my own voice just for realtors, and I don't have to partner with someone who has beliefs that I don't share. So when you don't give to our pack, you force me to have to create coalitions with people who I may not share their principles. And that's what our pack does. So when you get a chance to contribute to our pack, don't think about Republicans, don't think about Democrats. Think about me needing to sit down with the county commissioner or the city councilor and have that conversation one-on-one -on -one without having to partner with the builders, without having to partner with the apartment complex, so, and without having to create a coalition who may or may not have another agenda when we get in the room together. Is everybody with me here? So if I can get you to contribute to our pack this year, you don't have to give a thousand, you don't have to give five thousand, you don't have to give ten thousand, just give your fair share. The cost of a yard sign, give thirty-five dollars, and that's all I ask of everybody. And that gives me one conversation with a commissioner that I haven't had before. Now, because I'm an interactive person, and I know that there's wine and beer back there, <laughs> I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna take questions, and then I'm gonna turn you back over to Susan. They said, be strong, but don't be long. <laughs> so, questions, come on, there's nothing you, there's off limits today that you can ask me. If you had a question, a moment with the CEO, yes, sir. So, uh, there's, there's always a lot of talk about the profession of real estate sales people going away in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your opinions and thoughts on, on that? As technology advances and all these iBuyers and, and big corporations are trying to get into, uh, get into the pockets of the real estate professional? Well, I've got some very strong opinions on that. Uh, look at all these cameras. <laughs> so, uh, there will always be a need for realtors. That's right, relationships. There will always be a need for relationships. You see this, I can go to an app, but an app can't smell cat pee. <laughs> that app can't smell cat pee. Only the realtors can do that. Only someone who's actually walked through the home. See, it's great to be able to buy a home sight unseen, but without someone there in the home to actually tell you what it's like, uh, that app can't help you with personal situations. I buyers will always be because America is built on convenience. That's not going away, people. Uh, the electronic uh, transfers and things that you want them. But real estate is going to always be a relationship situation. So, but if you turn it over to them, if you stop seeing customers and you refuse to do this, then it is going to go the way of the um, travel agent. So don't ever give away your power. Don't, the power is the ability to meet with a customer face to face and interact with them. So, um, and, and I'll also say this, the, every, everything that comes out new is not evil. Learn how to embrace it. Every new company doesn't need to be shut down. There's always going to be new platforms and new opportunities, and we welcome them at the Association of Realtors. There's always going to be a new way to do things. Embrace it. Chew the meat. Spit out the bones. Everything's not for you. Take the best of that. Take the best of that. Incorporate it into your company and keep it moving and leave everybody else whining about it. Because while they're whining about it, you're making money with it. And that's what you should be doing. Sir. 
Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Everybody talks about affordable housing. They have, uh, you know, they talk the talk. Where is the affordable housing? I mean, it, it's such a big need nationally, regionally, locally. How, how do we get access to that? Because everybody okay. talks the talk, but where is it? They're all talking. Yes, ma'am? I am going to pick on my friend Juan right now, who's actually here today. He wanted to connect with some realtors, Mr. Juan Perez. He's working on a project right now. Great segue. I'll leave you guys to do that. I myself Sorry, cannot. You know, that's okay. So, um, uh, <laughs> I, today we're screening um, political candidates at the association. And everyone that's running for house office or county or some of the other offices was at Laura today. So we had a panel there screening and then I had one of the uh, candidates come sit down in my office and say, Cliff, talk to me about uh, affordable housing. So what we've done in Central Florida is we have, uh, we waited until it's too late. And I won't sure about that. We waited until it's too late. I was sounding the alarm with other people who were listening. I went to all the economic development people, the companies and things of that nature, and I talked to them and I said, if you're recruiting Amazon, if you're bringing a job here, and they got 2,400 jobs or 1,000 jobs, I said, you stop. And they said, why? I said, because there's no place for them to live. You said this a couple years ago. Remember? Yes, you, I've been giving this speech for years. So now here's what you have to do. Um, because of legislation, because of bureaucracy and red tape, the sweetness has been taken out of the deal for developers. And so as I spoke to this legislator today, from a state level and from a local level, we've got to incentivize our builders to be able to build affordable housing again. We've got to put the sweetness back in the deal so that there's some meat left on the bones for them. This means that when it comes to uh, tap fees, no tap fees, things of that nature, the local cities and counties, they, um, the counties just can't make any money. They're actually going to have to do the reverse. I remember in 2008, I went to Lo Washington, D.C. to lobby for TARP. TARP was the uh, first program before it was Obama, care and all those things, but it had an $8,000 first time home buyer tax credit. The local counties and the local governments, as I said earlier, are going to have to incentivize the builders to build affordable housing. So that you're going to have to do that by giving them tax credits. You're going to have to do that by waiving fees. You're going to have to do that by putting the meat back on the bone so that they want to go out and build affordable housing again. Only when you do that will you uh, spur building. Raising, let me tell you, uh, when you actually do things like uh, put a rent freeze in, it's going to do the opposite. So Cliff, why are you bringing that up now? Because you see, when you, when you do something like that, that's gonna to have to go on the ballot. Well, if I know that in November something's going on the ballot and I'm a landlord, what am I gonna do with the rent? I'm gonna raise it. And then once I raise the rent, because I'm gonna get my money on the, up front, then all those rents are gonna go up and we're gonna be in a worse situation. And if you own an apartment and they're telling you now that you can't raise your rent again, you're gonna raise it now, and then you're gonna sell it or turn it into condos. And our affordable housing, you got it. Our affordable housing issue is gonna get even worse. So we've got to incentivize our builders, we've got to incentivize developers and realtors to uh, restock the market, and that's how we're gonna work ourselves out of it. Um, I'd like to piggyback off of that. I, uh, just Jump on, brother. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> I just relocated from the city of Yonkers in New York, the third largest city in mm -hmm. New York, and a lot of the developers. They have the incentives, but what they don't want to do is they don't want to construct so you can have ownership. They want to construct right. so you can rent. And one of the things that I'm passionate about, especially in the Hispanic community, is we, we need to own. Right. You know, you don't want to rent. So how, you know, from what you're saying and from your experience and knowledge, try to, you know, you can put close that, that way. You can put that in policy. The same way insurance companies make sure that this is a primary residence, the same way any of that can be written into policy. Any good attorney, any but good... But developers just want to build... Precisely, but you can make it so that, uh, like perhaps, back in the day when they had enterprise zones, you could only, uh, and this was another way of incentivizing buildings, building, um, in order for you to qualify for enterprise zone tax credits, the things such as the lumber, the steel, the wood, all that had to be bought within a specific zip code. 
there are different ways to uh, write public policy that make sure that this is going to become an owner-occupied property. You can absolutely do so. Uh, make so that the property cannot be sold, very similar to uh, other types of programs with Habitat. You can write the policy, but he is absolutely right. Uh, we, we need owner-occupied property, or it will just turn into another situation. Cliff, I never thought in my lifetime I would do this, but you have like one minute. What's your final words? I've got one more. <laughs> Can I stay in touch with you? You've got a... Absolutely. I'll give everyone in here my cell phone. Yes, perfect. Uh, one final question. So one last question. I love the fact that we're going to have a brand new building. I love the fact that you guys purchased the other building that is right next door. So how does that benefit us as members of Aura? for you guys to receive that return? Well, number one is going to help us keep the cost of doing the business down. Um, we don't want to ever have to have to raise the rates, have to raise dues. We want to raise dues in order to keep up with fair market value, but not because we're in the hole. Number two, we're actually building three huge classrooms. So you'll no longer have to come to uh, venues outside. That's going to be a place for you to rent to come. It's going to be an event center. It'll be the only event center between Lee Road and Altamont. So if my rep wants to host an event there, it's going to have a full-size kitchen, it'll have three ballroom-sized classrooms, and it's going to be all for the members to do. Um, you haven't seen the lake that I've got either back there, but there's actually a lake back there. Don't go there, it's alligators in it. But there's actually a lake on the back side of the property. We're going to clear the tree line. You'll look at, uh, we'll put a gazebo, we're going to put a dock out there. It's going to be an outdoor space for the members as well. So there's some things that are hidden that we haven't brought forward yet, but it's all for the members. It's all for the members. Can, can, I, also, can I also just say, as the treasurer of the Orlando Regional Realtor Association on the 100th year, that Aura has done a very, very good job, the leadership, the legacy of Aura, as to making great financial investments. So this building isn't all just cash. This is, this is coming because our members, our associations, our past leaders have made incredible decisions. That's why we're getting a new building. And myself, not as a leader of Aura, not as a treasurer of Aura, as a member of Aura for 22 years, can I just say I'm going to appreciate, uh, number one, landmark building, a beautiful, amazing, modern building that everyone can see from my core. Number two, Parking. <laughs> Number three, great technology, great rooms. Most importantly, a better member experience for me as a member and for all members. And that's what it's all about. It's about the member experience. But I can genuinely tell you, this is this is the reason why we have to make the decision to have strong leaders in place so that we can have an amazing building because we are the seventh largest association. association in the country, Woo. leading association, mega association, and we lead. Yeah, so, thank you. Cliff, Woo. I know you have something else to say. You're just going to say it, right? I was going to say it anyway. Go for it. I knew you were. Listen, you matter. Not rep matters. When I got to order, this is the truth. When I got to order some of the old fogies, I, said, um, I took a look at our demographics. And they told me, I said, I'm gonna offer the classes in Spanish. Everything that we do in order, I want it taught in Spanish. I want everything printed in Spanish. People fought me on that. They told me it was a waste of money. They told me it was a waste of time. And I looked at them and I said, you haven't looked up to see who Aura is today. Yeah. Now, Rep, you are Aura. You are Aura. I wanna see you participating on committees. I wanna see you on the board of directors. I wanna see you on those global trips. When I look up, I wanna see you everywhere that Aura is. You've got a dynamic slate of leadership coming up and it's all about you. So that having been said, if no one else tells you today, y'all know what comes next. If you haven't heard it from anyone else, if no one said it before you left home, if you haven't heard it from your husband or your kids or your children, I want to say it to you right now. I love you.
want more of Clem, come back to our next event on August 22nd. We'll tell you more about that. We'll be partnering with, partnering, getting side next to the FR, FR convention. So we'll be there. So finally, this is what I'm gonna say. Thank you for those of you that stayed till the end of the party, right? Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for supporting us. And we've accomplished two really crazy cool things this year on our NAREP board. And one of which is we have people coveting to be on our board and people interviewing to be on our board. And, and we've been able to up the professionalism and the decorum and all the things that should happen with the board. So Ruth will be taking over the president role next year, covet to be on the board that she leads. That would be amazing. The second thing is in September, Latitudes happens in San Diego. Our, our um, chapter has bought two bundles. What does that mean to you? That we're willing to take our bundle, which is a ticket to Latitudes that you will not have to pay for because our board paid for it already in advance for you. And we're willing to share that with our members, share that with our sponsors, we just need to hear from you. So look up on the national site, you'll see about Latitude, you'll see the opportunities there for education, the opportunities to become more passionate about what? Hispanic home ownership. So thank you guys again from the bottom of our hearts. These events aren't easy to put on. Rose, Ruth, Ida. Rose just does this all the time. She's gonna tell me something that I need to say. I just wanna say thank you to our president, okay. Susan West, who exemplifies diversity and what the new NARA looks like, in my opinion. But also, Soveda just joined like two seconds ago. Who else joined? Can you stand up?